Hi, and welcome to the Ruby Tuesday. My name's Ruben. And I'm Kay. Let's try that again. almost went right over me. I almost did, yeah. There is someone next to me. <laughs> Let's try again. Hi, and welcome to the Ruby Tuesday. My name's Ruben. And I'm Kay. And today we are reviewing a HBO Max limited series called Station Eleven. Post-apocalyptic saga spanning multiple timelines, telling the stories of survivors of a devastating flu as they attempt to rebuild and reimagine the world anew, while holding on to the best of what's been lost. So there is 10 episodes, hour-long episodes, it's based on a book that was filmed, uh, well, the book wasn't filmed, the series was filmed in Canada, uh, and everybody living in Canada can't watch this series because it's on HBO Max, so I'm really sorry about that. Uh, so it was filmed in Canada. It was also written in Canada. Well, the book was. <laughs> okay. I feel really s- sad for Canadians. Um <laughs> Well, they get the book, so it's okay. They get the book, yes. Mm-hmm. I think this is an interesting series to talk about. I also want to say that it doesn't come out altogether at once. I believe that the first three episodes drop tomorrow, which being Friday the 17th, and then they're like sporadically until, I think it goes all the way into 2022, because we're not far away from that, until they reach, obviously, that climactic episode, episode 10. I do think they missed a beat not giving 10 episodes, and I feel like I'm saying that a lot recently about series where certain networks have now tr- decided to go back to the kind of individual episodes, or they'll start with a bang of three and then give you those individual episodes weekly. Sometimes that works. I think for like cop shows that have a contained story per episode, when it's one story that's chopped up and is very complicated that you need to follow all the tangents that the story goes on, then by the time you get to the end, you've lost your weight because it's week on week and you're still trying to remember what the hell was going on in the first three episodes. So that, I think, is a mistake by the series. When I first started watching this, I thought, wow, that is super interesting. No idea where this is going to go. It's really, in a way, quite frighteningly similar to to what we're experiencing mm. with Omicron. Say the next variant that comes along could kill us all. <laughs> Let's hope not. Um, but that's kind of the premise of this story. Yeah, it's very... Um, is that there's apt. a flu strain and then suddenly it mutates and its mortality rate is like almost 100%. There was a moment moment in I think it was the first or second episode where I was just like oh this is way too close to home this is <laughs> this is scarily eerie and like this could totally happen mm. the acting the cinematography the score the scripting is all really well done well crafted well thought out just found that it really lagged in the middle it did a lot yeah. it felt like it was taking you on all these journeys that were necessary but could have been done in half the time it was quite indulgent yeah uh, in in the way it was telling the story it definitely felt pretentious in the middle now i hate saying that but each episode i was clock watching the interesting thing about these hour-long episodes is i think we enjoyed especially the middle few episodes the half an hour of the end of the episode so it took half an hour to get into what they were trying to say with characters that you often follow for the whole episode found that that was fun but you're just kind of wondering what that's got to do with the main story because the next episode was never to do with the character that you just were following so they'll often give you a whole episode with one character and then come back to that other character like three or four episodes and never mind about the different storylines they're following. They're following different storylines in different times as well. And so you're going way back 20 years. You're jumping forward to present. You even skip a little bit of when you meet a character and then you're following their journey, which also is a time jump. So if you do miss an episode or it's been a couple of weeks and you're like, what happened again? You are going to struggle to follow along. Yeah. For sure. One of my favourite things is the Travelling Symphony Mm. uh, and their incredible costumes that they've created out of found items. I mean, seriously, the design team on this series needs awards. Absolutely, yeah. Because the costumes were fantastic. Um, The the characters, just the way that life has evolved over time Mm. because of this, you know, devastating event is just so interesting and so well captured in the the set dressing and the wardrobes and just the props and stuff that they use the world feels really lived in yeah as really well. really does yeah yeah i mean i think uh, the traveling Sym- symphony um is definitely our favorite characters of the yeah. bunch i would have preferred staying in that time zone for the most of the series just because i found them to be very interesting whenever they're on screen 
every character is unique or like every person yeah. is but they really felt like real characters like you say a lived in world whatever clothes they were wearing especially when they were performing oh. so the clothes that they were performing in they had to make from scratch because obviously everything has died out and that you know if they're performing hamlet the eccentricities of the costume is used from the environment that they've picked up so bottles and weird designs and headgear that all look incredible and you can see they're handmade but then you've got to think they're handmade to look like they're post-apocalyptic worth traveling symphony and the art people just had a lot of fun making the costumes yeah, which absolutely. i which i think is like one of the the better things about this yeah. series for me i also really loved the way they used shakespeare Shakespeare's actual plays, Shakespeare's actual words to further the storyline. Mm. So there are times, I think two occasions that I can recall, um, where they actually use a play of Hamlet, uh, well the one was Hamlet, where they actually do a scene from it and instead mm. of it just being a, oh aren't we cool, we can do Shakespeare, yeah. it's actually furthering the story Very clever. of these characters by using the words of Shakespeare, which I thought was really clever. It misdirects you on purpose so, well, I don't know if it was on purpose, but every time something is revealed about a character or, or something, you're kind of like going, oh, oh, so that must connect somehow. That must be a big reveal later on. Or, you know, like <laughs> you keep guessing, like something's going to come of this, something. And then sometimes something does and sometimes nothing does. Mm. And it's like, OK. Well, I guess if you take the book the mythology around the book and the book itself away then you're just following characters after an apocalyptic event and it's like it's like a documentary we're just we're sort of seeing uh who they are and how they got there yeah and it's like a, a study of of what happens yeah to I, I mean that itself is interesting but it does mm. have a really nice conclusion to it yeah it does um, i thought it was uh, the way it came together in the end there's a couple of characters that you've kind of come to like and then you see these characters and where they end up and i thought that was it, it was a good way because i really wasn't sure how they we're going to wrap up this weird story that seemed to be going nowhere. Yeah. Like many episodes, I, was, I just, you know, the whole time we're like, what is this series? Where is it going? <laughs> it's performed amazingly yeah. and it looks brilliant. <laughs> and I'm interested <laughs> and sometimes I'm riveted depending on the episode. Yeah. And then I'm just like... But what is it? <laughs> what are you? <laughs> what are you? <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's an interesting one. I did enjoy it and I enjoyed it m more towards the end. If I was going to rate it, like the first three episodes only, then I probably would have given it okay rating. If I were to rate it like in the middle, I'd, mm. it'd be way lower. But now like coming towards the end, I'm like, okay, that's that's concluded very well. Which is why I'm giving a full season review and not doing plot spoilers like episodic recaps. I think some people will do that. I think I just want to give the whole series and just give you an overview of that. Don't worry if you're watching this series and you get in the middle and you're like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do with this? This is why have I invested my time? Do I need to watch the end? I think you will like it when you reach the end. Yeah. I mean, if you don't watch it all the way through, you're going to be left with so many questions and dissatisfied. <laughs> yeah. You're just going to feel dissatisfied with the whole thing. If you watch all the way through to the end, you may still feel slight dissatisfaction, <laughs> but at least it wraps up the story. Yeah. What are you going to rate it? <laughs> oh, this is a really tough one, because I think if I was taking it on the artistic merit of of it, I would give it four and a half out of five Nicolas mm. Cage's. Mm -hmm. But I think because the story itself left me a bit dissatisfied i'm going to drop that down to like three and three quarter nicholas cages okay i was going to give it a four yeah even though i was dissatisfied with the stuff in the middle i think it redeemed itself by the end yeah um i think it came together really nicely i think maybe the reason that i feel so dissatisfied is because i thought it was going to go somewhere the title suggested it was mm. the book suggested it was but it's not but it's not it's definitely not yeah <laughs> All right, so let us know your thoughts below. Have you read the book? And once you, if you're one of those that have read the book and I'm watching the series, how do you think that compares? Because that's yeah. always an interesting one. Sometimes it's really hard to get that across, but it, this seems so specific and hard not to take content from the book that I'd be interested to see if they've done it justice, if is the book as random as this series is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, would love to chat to you guys in the comments. As always, thanks so much for watching. But most of all, until next time, remember, live, live long, long and Tuesday. Tuesday.